one of the things that Bob needs on his rolling mill is some form of uh, roll gap indicator. And uh, so what I've, what I've done there is, if you recognise that as the, the, the top of the rolling mill for winding the gears together, I've made up a graduated dial. So there are marks around the outside and there are also um, numerals in there just to, to tell him how much he's gone down. One full turn is one millimetre. These aren't hard to make. Uh, these, these numbers have been engraved, um, but they could be stamped. I've, I've done that with, with other things. Um, the engraving is done with a, with a little jig that I made up um, based on pictures of other people's little jigs they've made up. So uh, I thought I'd, I'd just run you through how this is done uh, so that next time you need a, a graduated hand wheel or, or something, you've got uh, an example. So here's my blank after roughing out. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a fair bit of swarf around the lathe. It was one of those awkward sort of blanks that um, was a little bit too small to try and salvage the, the leftover material, but it was a little bit too big just to put straight on and use. So, so I basically turned down the OD to get clean up. I've machined this boss here. Uh, because that's where I'm going to do some of my detail work. So not all of this is going to stay, but it's going onto the mill next, and we're, we're going to do things there. This is a bit of uh, 5083, I think. Uh, it came from a company that, that fabricates large aluminium devices, and this was actually the plug out of an annular cutter. So if you're after um, nice turnable bits of aluminium, it, it pays to uh, to talk to the fabricators because what they see as scrap could well be a, a useful size to you. This is just under 90 millimeters in diameter. Um, so what's that? Inch and inch and a half? Uh, sorry, two and a half inches. Three and a half inches. Three and a half inches. So you know, reasonable size, and about it's it's about uh, an inch thick, 25 millimeters thick. Typically, when you use a rotary table you hold it down with the bolt there and then come around and hold it down with a hold down clamp like that. I decided long ago that that was a bit awkward. So instead of a hold down clamp like this with uh, strap, bolt, T-nut, etc. I made up a thing that looks like this and that sits like so and then my T-nut and bolt, which just happens purely coincidentally to be the same height as I need to hold my vise down to the mill, can just slide in there. And sit there. Another question which is occasionally asked is, how big a rotary table should I get? This mill table is 9 inches wide, thereabouts. This is an 8 inch rotary table and as you can see it sits on there just nicely. If you go bigger than that you then risk the, run the risk of the table sticking out past the edge of the mill which means at your extremes of travel you may bump into the column. You can go smaller. The only thing with that is that the screw acts on a worm gear so the smaller your table is the less leverage you have if you're trying to do some circular milling. So you want to try and get the largest rotary table you can get that fits on your mill table, ideally. I do have a false table which I put on here which takes this out to 10 inches and that's good. Occasionally you do need that uh, and uh, you'll probably see that in upcoming videos. So here I've centered the rotary table with the uh, 3D tester. Uh, I find that just is, 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 is as useful way as any to do that using the center ball there. One of the great things about a DRO is being able to centre that and make that your absolute position and we're going to use that capability uh, in a moment when we start machining away. So here's our blank centred up on the rotary table. The little divot that I put in the, the blank when I had it in the lathe to mark the centre I've lined up with an optical microscope, a uh, toolmaker's microscope. A wonderful things if you get the chance to, to get one. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend it. Hemingway kits also do a kit of them. Uh, they're a UK company, but you can buy an optical 
oh, sorry, a toolmaker's microscope from them, which which also may uh, be of assistance. Regardless of what method you use, that dimple needs to be on the centre there. So the round boss we had is no more. I've put a, a straight edge along there. I've scribed out a uh, a rough circle there of the D shape that I'm after, and then I've gone along and just done, done a clearance cut around there, as you can see from the wobbly edge it was XY manipulations. What I'm now going to do is come along with the ro with the, the mill, come along to here which is the, the zero point, then rotate the rotary table 90 degrees and then continue on and that'll get me straight, arc, straight. So one last thing I want to do before I take this part off the mill is actually put a radius on that edge. Some of you may recognise this. This is a uh, router bit. Uh, and the nice thing about them is that uh, they're carbide. They cut very nice in aluminium. So I'm going to set this up in a, in a uh, collet chuck. Uh, just run along there to put a, a radius on that uh, edge there. So here's my part so far. 
I drilled a, drilled a, a 10 millimeter hole through there, uh, and that was simply by standing it up in the um, the vise on the drill press, uh, squaring this back surface up and drilling down straight through. Once I've made my uh, pin up, cotter pin up, I'll then clamp that to that, put that into a forge or bore through from this side. I don't trust that centre, that's an old centre, but we'll see how we go. And from memory, th yes, there we go, 0.393. So that's the number I need. So here's my indicator disc. Um, it was rough to shape there in the lathe. I've then gone on to the mill and done my D-shaped machining. And now I've got my cotter pin to be. Uh, that's just a scrap of sheet metal I had lying around and the screw was not quite the right length, so I put a couple of washers on there. That's going to slide into there. I'm now going to put that into the lathe centre that up, bore that out to the same size as the uh, gear shaft on the rolling mill and uh, then all I need to do is, is graduate the outside. So here's the bored out disc. If you look very carefully in there you can just see a, a spot of darker metal, that's the cotter. So in terms of alignment I'm spot on. Well, I hope so. I've I centred this up in the four jaw with the, the indicator on the outside of the disc there. To stop uh, marking the aluminium, bruising the aluminium, I put in some pieces of card, uh, business card actually. It's about the only use I get for them. Another possibility too, if you're doing a lot of this sort of thing, is making up some copper strips which is wrapped around the jaws of the chuck. And uh, that that's a more permanent way of doing things. I did that once when I was uh, doing some delicate machining. but bits of card work just as well. So this scrappy looking bit of kit here is my engraver. I use this for putting graduations on the sides of shafts. So I've got my indicator disc, I've actually clamped it to the, the shaft that it's going on and put that in the chuck of the dividing head. The engraving bit is, is a broken tap. Now I know that I, I'm probably the only person on YouTube who ever breaks taps, but I do and they've still got a life. So this is this is a 532nd tap. I've taken the, the broken tap off and I've ground it into a point so that I can secure it there with the grub screw. So it's basically an action like that. And to get different lengths of graduations I'll put um, different length strips in there. I've actually got them marked for size so I can get some, you know, quite a distance and some just a little bit off. Okay, To adjust it, that gets clamped down to the mill table here. And I'm using the mill table because it's got its, it's, its T-slots. Uh, so that'll get clamped down and it's just a matter of playing with that and playing with the clamping until you get a groove that's, that's deep enough. So thanks for following along. As you can see, this is the finished example. 
uh, and it's worked out quite nicely. The lathe dial on the front of the clip was also one that I made up and uh, there are other occasions where I've, I've done this which you'll probably see sooner or later. But thanks for watching and uh, I hope this has been inspirational for you and uh, thanks to those who've inspired me.